we would like to welcome participants from DepEd, Aasin City, Province of Leyte. Magandang hapon po. Maritime Industry Authority Main Office, Pier Manila. Magandang hapon po sa inyo. COA IT Audit Office. Dole Region 5, Legazpi City. Local Government Unit of Imus Cavite. Magandang hapon po sa inyo dyan. National Irrigation Administration. Napolcom Region 7, Cebu City. Philippine Air Force. DSWD Field Office Region 3. Securities and Exchange Commission. Pag-ibig Fund, Kalamba Hub. Don Carlos Bukidnon, GSIS Malaybalay, DNR and DepEd, Davao del Sur, Digo City. Indeed, we have a lot of viewers from different agencies all over the country. Apologies if I failed to mention yours, but nonetheless, welcome to the day two of this webinar series, and I hope you're all having a great Thursday afternoon. Before we proceed, we would like to remind our participants that in order to get an e-certificate of attendance, you should accomplish the session and course evaluation forms and pass the exam. The unified three-day evaluations and exam will be given towards the end of the session tomorrow, October 7. For your questions, please feel free to write it at the comment section of our Facebook or at the live chat section para naman po sa ating mga YouTube audiences. We will try to answer your questions live at the end of the session later. So without further ado, allow me to introduce our presenter for this webinar focusing on strengthening government digital services. Today's speaker graduated with a bachelor's, master's, and doctorate in physics from the University of the Philippines. She is currently an associate professor, the Aboitis Chair in Data Science, Deputy Managing Director for Access at AIM, and Academic Program Director for the Master of Science in Data Science at the Asian Institute of Management. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all give a warm welcome to our case presenter, Dr. Erika Legare. Dr. Erika, magandang hapon po. The floor is yours, Doc. Take it away. Magand magandang hapon. Magandang hapon sa lahat po. Good afternoon, everyone. I actually have three screens sa harap ko po do. So I can see si Narogen, Kelvin sa YouTube. Uh, uh, good afternoon, DSWD, CO, Testa7, Cebu. And of course, sa Facebook, I can also see the comments. Um, so ayan, magandang hapon, DBM Central Office, uh, MMSU, Batak. Hello, Ma'am Mercy. So this afternoon, we will be talking about how technology and digital can enhance public sector productivity and to the topic that Michael mentioned earlier, paano natin uh, mas strengthen ito further and what can we do uh, as a strategy no, para successful tayo dito. Um, sana may sound na tayo sa YouTube, no? Uh, Hart, good afternoon uh, from LGU Baguio. Okay, PNP Forensic Group is also here. Lots of exciting things that we can really discuss this afternoon. But first, I'd like to thank the DAP and the Public Sector Productivity Initiative. It's always a pleasure to engage with the public sector of the Philippines. Hindi na banggit kanina, but prior to me coming home to the Philippines in 2017, I was actually working for the Singapore government. Uh, I was a scientist there under their Agency for Science, Technology, and Research, which, which is a branch under their Ministry of Trade and Industry. So what we were doing there was really doing a lot of digital work and a lot of data science to help the agencies uh, fulfill their functions to, you know, of course, the objective is to improve the well-being of individuals. So, um, ang request ko lang sa inyo today is, this is what I'm seeing, no? Kinapipaste ko to kanina nung two minutes pa lang. I'll be asking you questions because I also want to feel your pulse. And can you type okay? Can you type okay in the comment and also the, the YouTube uh, comment section and also the Facebook comment section? Can you do that? Just so I can see if you can, you can hear me. I know that there is a bit of a delay. But um, let's see. 
if all right thank you jose perez is the first one and Politz, Zityav, thank you all so much. I'm glad that you can hear me and I'm glad that you're hearing me okay. Oh, see si YouTube, humahabol. Thank you so much. Uh, lots of you. And thank you for the smiling face, Mara. Maraming salamat. Okay, so balik tayo. So kaya tina-check ko if you can respond because I also want you to write in the chat box. Diba kahapon we already had the first day we talked about digital transformation. And I want to know, para sa inyo, no? Um... Bakit, wh- anong ibig sabihin ng digital? What is digital for you? And why are we even talking about this right now? All right, I can see still a lot of you responding. Maraming salamat, Ian, Jerry, uh, Kutamora, Raul. Okay, so my question is, why digital? And what does digital mean to everyone here in the room, to all our public sector individuals? Sige nga, let's see. I'm just going to wait a bit because may konting lag lang. Technology, sabi ni Xiao. Okay? Digital for you means technology. All right? Technology is digital. That's correct. And and why is this important? And Sun Tzu, huh, that's probably not your first name, no? It's It means digital is IT enabled. You want to be much more exact. And Jennifer says, you know, using technology can make our lives easier. Rolando from YouTube is saying that we want to communicate by numbers. And Ramon Pioroda is saying that speedy and simplify response. So all of these are great responses. And Elsie, I like what you're commenting here. Sabi mo, paperless transactions para mas mabilis. Uh, the use of technology, according to Wilfred, uh, is useful in relaying information to the clientele or the ones that we serve, no? the Filipino people. Virtual space, digital means innovation, for sure. Right now, a lot of digitization is happening and it's, uh, it's being accelerated. It's not just re- happening, but it's accelerating because of technology. Lots of great insights that I am seeing here in the chat boxes and the comment boxes. Thank you all so much. We can review that later. And ito gusto ko sinabi ni Berda de Treyes. It's for strategic action to accelerate business and other activities. This is so wonderful. And I, I know I want to move to the next slide, but I also want to highlight what Esteban here is saying. Uh, it allows us to reach and serve a wider geographical scope, improve quality and environmentally friendly processes. I, I love everything that you're saying here, everyone. Thank you so much for participating. No, actually, all of the things that you said are correct, and I cannot read um, all of the comments here, but they, are, they would all fall under these boxes. Now, why do we want to go digital? Um, number one, we can achieve a better government through ICT, information, communication, technology, or any other technology. We are now in this so-called the fourth industrial revolution, wherein there is a marriage na, between the cyber system or the digital system and the physical system. Nag-uusap na yung cyber world and the physical world. And we also want to really invest and we want to go into digital. It's actually not anymore a nice to have capability but a must have uh, to create public value. No? So you have to ask yourself, ano ba yung public value? So these are the things that would benefit the public in general no? from from getting um, yung efficient the service from the government, uh, yung flow of information like what you said, yung accessibility ng services, fast and easy. Ito yung sinasabi ni, ni Genevieve here. No? Optimize the process to deliver services more effectively. These are all public value. Very good. And if we're digital as well, we want to ensure greater transparency no, parang mahirap ng lokohin yung system if things are automated and digital, yung openness natin, and of course, inclusion. I think one of you mentioned, I forget na kasi ang daming comment, but one of you mentioned something about reaching to the to the farther parts of the Philippines. I know that there are those uh, from a lot of you from Mindanao here. I'm also from Mindanao. I'm actually from Cotabato City. So hello to every one of you. So inclusion is also very important. Hello as well from Iligan. My parents are in Cagayan de Oro. 
So, and finally, which is something that I also would like to highlight later, is the data-driven culture. Now, once we are digital, we are definitely going to produce a lot of data. And the question is, what are we going to do with these data sets? So this is not just about uh, moving online, you know, about a faster transaction. It's actually more than that. And um, this is something that I want to focus on in a bit, the data-driven culture. Okay, so next one. Uh, I'm going to give you some use cases para ma-inspire tayo, okay? And then later, I will ask you, i nyo na, where else or how else can we use digital in the way we do things in the Philippines, in your provinces, in your barangay, how can we use digital, no? Lalo na sa San Narciso Zambales, for example, or um, so Kabakan, Cotabato, hello, no? How are we going to use digital? So I'm going to give you some examples. One of the best examples that when you read about, for example, the ADB report, this is from ADB na report, the Asian Development Blog, is a mga classic example that they give uh, when they talk about successful um, digitalization is yung Adhar ng India. Ito yung digital ID program nila. Ang galing nito, no? um, almost 99%, at least that's the number that I read, uh, ng kanilang adult population are already in their ID system. And if you have this, if you have all of this in the database of the government, ang bilis to give and deliver yung mga ayuda, right? Uh, you know, I'm sure some of you uh, in the DSWD, DOH, and in the LGUs, you, you had a hard time reaching out to your constituents during the pandemic. Yung pagbigay ng ayuda, di ba? It was taking so long for some barangays, for some cities, um, essentially because wala tayong proper databasing kung sino yung mga nakatira sa barangay na to, gaano kalaki yung family. Although we have that information typically nasa papel no? or naka-separate na computers, but wala talagang digital ID program pa tayo then, then, okay? So yun yung mga advantage nito and improve governance in other areas such as yung tax enforcement and compliance. Once you have a digital ID, you can, in fact, do a lot of automation sa tax collection. And ang maganda sa Adhar ng India, okay, is that yung ID system nila is already linked to the bank accounts of the individuals. Of course, no, I'm, what I'm talking about here are the advantages. We also have to realize na may mga disadvantage din dito. And on a more technical aspect, yung mga, if, uh, let's say, na-hack, system. That's why before uh, we, we go really deep dive and give all of our information out there, we also have to make sure that we're confident about the security of our data sets. So it's not India uh, alone that's all, all actually doing this. So Philippines, we are starting this. No? So lots of advantages, even with having that card alone. Uh, nakita niyo yung uh, advantages. India, Indonesia now has the EKTP card. No? Um, Malaysia, you have the MyCAD. Uh, Pakistan, you have NADRA. And the Philippines has the PhilSys ID. Nakuha niyo na ba yung ano, PhilSys ID ninyo? <laughs> I, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed uh, to get mine. I applied last year, but still waiting. But this is really a very good step. No, um, so the proper allocation of budget, the proper allocation of too long will be much more efficient and, in a sense, accurate if you don't game the system. Another example, um, oh, just nagihintay pa tayo, wala pa nagihintay. I can see in the comment section. Another example is ng uh, digital in government is in sa Kenya. They have this thing that they call M-Pesa. Okay, it is branchless banking service for almost everyone in Kenya. No, hindi la sa Philippines masyadong marami pa tayong unbanked, no? So what is the advantage of having this branchless banking service? Conveniently, very convenient for the Kenyans to actually receive loans or apply for loans and pay their loans. Yung mga MFI or the microfinance uh, institutions they also get to offer more competitive loan rates. Diba ngayon sa probinsya, sa mga 
far-flung areas, medyo hindi pa tayo naabot ng mga branchless banking service. So, doon tayo sa mga, nag- ano ba yun? Um, five, six, no? Um, I'm not so sure how prevalent five, six is. Pero, ang maganda, if you have this branchless banking service, is that these institutions can reach out to you and mas maganda yung, yung rate na, na interest rate na mga loans. So, much more competitive loan rates. And hindi lang for, for application of loan, even for the tracking of our finances. So, ito yung MPESA. It's really, really good. No? It's highly supported by the government, working closely with telcos uh, in the area. Um, remittances is also now part of this MPESA. Uh, reduce direct interaction between taxpayers. So, bumababa yung corruption at yung bribery. Kasi nga, this is what I'm saying, everything is digital everything is online. Hindi na yung uh, may, may cash ka, ganyan, pinapasok sa bulsa. No? Uh, and the good news is that we are also moving towards this direction. As you know, no, marami sa inyo, I'm sure, uh, may GCash na, yes? Meron ding Maya and then meron ding Discartech from RCBC. So, uh, the idea here, I know that some of these organizations and companies worked closely with the LGUs, with the government, especially in in distributing mga ayuda and and expect that we'll have more of this. This is another example why investing in digital is important kasi yung inclusion that we mentioned earlier as well. All right? The third use case or example, this is really just to convince you no, why, why we're even talking about digital transformation. And my idea here is to really bring it uh, to all of us na mas tangible, mas ma-imagine natin how it can help us. Uh, for example, itong Philippines Check My School. I'm not so sure if you've heard about this, but probably yung mga DepEd colleagues natin um, have heard about this. It's a community monitoring tool. It uses crowdsourcing technology to improve the quality of public education. So pag may feedback ka, kunwari, oy, nasira yung ganitong pinto or binabaha dito, you can immediately report that no, to some central repository. This is uh, an effort between Check uh, My School na, um, na initiative, of course, uh, DepEd as well. And then you can see all of those involved here at the bottom. It's a, I think it's a really, really brilliant idea. It also produces reports on various aspects of public education services. No, including the quality of education infrastructure. Yung sinasabi ko, if kulang yung mga upuan, et cetera, et cetera, then there's a way for you to let the policymakers know that this is what's going on right now. This is our report, and maybe you can do something about it with our budget. Okay? The fourth example is the healthcare system. If it's digitalized, it's so efficient and can really help a lot of uh, Filipino people. So this is Thailand. No? Um, in, their, in their digital healthcare system, they can access consultations with doctors from a distance, especially for following up purposes. They can also um, work with pharmacists no? to, to dispense general and household drugs, you know, mga paracetamol, mga, um, I cannot mention mga brands, no? but ibuprofen, for example, uh, without having to see the patients in person. So, i-automate na lang yun and then biglang i-deliver na lang sa, sa place niya. Isn't, it, isn't this like super nice to have, no? And the doctors to treat patients only for specific illness and symptoms which are practical for treatment by telemedicine. So, may access na rin. Again, this is a one-stop shop. I know that in the Philippines, all of these are something that we can already access or we already have. Pero mag- hindi ba maganda yon if all of them are in a one big app that's actually managed by the government and other um, industries to help Filipino people, right? And last but not the least, and then after this, I'm going to ask you, where else can um, or how else may we benefit from digital and technology in your own places? No, uh, That's my next question for you. But this is the last example where digital is really helping government. Um, Jakarta Smart City Unit, in their effort, they also have these apps wherein they can also report about crimes no? or mga school placements and even traffic reporting. 
to your point earlier when I asked you back at, uh, why we're talking about digital, and many of you said access to information. This is very critical. And even the citizen relationship management platform, they have it in the unit. This is to improve the response times no, of the government. So it's really um, compelling. No? Kaya nga, I'm, I'm saying this is not any more a nice to have nothing or, oh, it's, it will be cool that we are becoming digital, but this is now a must have. So while I'm, I'm going to move forward with all the decks, but I want you to think about this question. And I want you to write down your answer in the, in the comment section. Para hindi kayo antukin, no? How else may we benefit from digital and technology? No? Pakita ko sa inyo ulit yung mga tinignan natin. So the first one, we looked at the ID program. The second, we looked at this uh, branchless banking service using apps. No? Uh, Doon na yung mga transactions to pay the bills, etc. And then you have the crowdsourcing platform when you're, you can report what's going on in your neighborhood, in your school, so that the policymakers can focus on it. And then digital healthcare system is another example. And finally, the smart city unit in Jakarta. So again, my question to you is, how else? No? Who knows? We can collect yung mga nilagay nyo dyan and then give it to uh, DICT or all of other, other friends in the agency para uh, they will focus on your suggestions. Na? It, it really, you're helping. And uh, the good news is that we do have a Philippine Digital Strategy Vision. No? Uh, I got this from the website of DICT. Sinasabi nila, this is really their vision, is to have a digitally empowered, innovative, globally competitive, and prosperous Philippine society where everyone has reliable, affordable, and secure information access in the country. A government that practices accountability and excellence to provide responsive online citizen-centered services. Yun yung, para sa akin, yun yung critical point doon eh. It's the citizen-centered services. I'm not even focusing on the technology, but how the technology can help each and every one of us, mga Filipinos. A thriving knowledge economy through public and private partnership. But... Everyone, when we talk about strategy, it's very important talaga to know where we are right now. No? And also identify where we would want to go. And then yung, yung path, yung actions that we will take to get from where we are to where we want to go, yun yung strategy. And as na bang Pilipinas ngayon? No? Uh, this is a 2020 data. All right? Malamang, I'm not so sure if nag-improve na or nag-worsen. Sana nag-improve. But according to this data from 2020, in terms of the Digital Quality of Life Index, medyo nahuhulit tayo. We are lagging behind our neighbors in Southeast Asia. No, this is, uh, I'm not really happy about this. And hindi lang na mababa yung internet quality, but in terms of affordability, medyo behind din tayo. Mahal ang internet in the Philippines. But the good news is that the government is really doing a lot in this aspect in terms of improving this. Because what I believe is that for all of us to really, uh, you know, you, you said earlier, inclusion, di ba? Para ma-include lahat. Every Filipino must have access to the internet. Ito yung pinaka bedrock, right? This is the, the bedrock of digital, of artificial intelligence. Tapat may access lahat tayo sa internet. In fact, in other countries, internet access is now a right. Karapatan, no? Um, especially during the pandemic, yung education, it was very tough if wala kang internet. So that is our vision, that's our dream. And I'm happy to report that the government, uh, where you are all at right now, is also pushing for this. Every Filipinos should feel safe and protected in cyberspace. All government agencies and offices must be connected to the internet. So, siguro we have to strategize. Siyempre, we cannot expect na lahat may internet. But at the very least, sana lahat ng government agencies will have internet connection. No? And finally, our infrastructure should be 
reliable, robust, and scalable. Meaning, pwede nating ipa, ipalawak. Now, we can scale it. Hindi lang to barangays, hindi lang to certain cities, but really all over the country. And ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, no? that we're actually doing good in a sense that may plano. No? We have a concrete plan. And we have a national broad band plan that you can check. Uh, it's a blueprint in the acceleration of the deployment of fiber optic cables and wireless tech, thereby improving internet speed in the country and hopefully even access and also affordability. Lots of efforts done here, and I'm, I'm not going to repeat them anymore, but I would like to encourage everyone, para ma-excite din kayo, to actually visit the DICT website for updates. Now, under their resources, you will see there the concrete plans of the government in really pushing for digitalization because it will benefit all of us. No? Aside from focus on infrastructure, so sabi na lang natin, we have the technology, we have the internet, we have the infrastructure. Another key aspect of our strategy should be digital and data literacy. Diba? Um, it's important for us to know how we should be behaving online no, para we are not harmed by, um, by mga, uh, you know, uh, bad elements online no, who will be stealing our information. But hindi lang yon. We should be trained, Filipinos should be trained how to use the internet to learn more, okay? To, to understand what facts are, to also know which ones are fake news and which ones are misinformation. Important yun eh. It's really digital and data literacy. Um, government, in my strong opinion, must work closely with the industry and academia. No? So itong tatlong helix na to, to make sure that we all become digital and data literate in the country. Um, in my strong opinion as well, all government employees and civil servants must be provided with learning and development programs. So again, thank you to DAP for this, especially on data and technology. You know, we might not be able to cover everything, but at least Ang hope ng DAP and myself as well is that this will spark something in you. A lot of resources out, uh, are out there so you can also self-learn. No? Uh, so that is the idea here. So I want to go back to my slide earlier on why we should go digital. Sinabi natin, achieve better government, to create public value, to ensure greater transparency, openness, and inclusion. And I added the part here because I'm a data scientist and ito talaga yung gusto ko rin eh. Even when I was still uh, in UP Diliman as an undergraduate student, I really want us to have a scientific and data-driven culture. No, no, I'm not saying that all of us become scientists, uh, but at least all of us know how to use data and information to empower us, not to empower government so we can serve the Filipinos better. So, anong ibig sabihin ng data-driven culture? Mayroon kasing tinatawag na data, information, and knowledge, right? Data is yung raw data that you have. Ito yung mga nasa, na, na print niyo in the papers, in your Excel sheets, in your Google Docs or document files, in your PDFs. These are raw data. And raw data is... Well, practically useless, no. If you don't, if you don't uh, gain insights from your data set, and this is where information comes in, wherein you try to organize all of your data by doing some level of analytics, could be trend analysis or even predictions, no. So you use the data to inform you, okay, on on what should be the steps that you should take to improve your your processes, or maybe even your products, kung ano yung service na binibigay niyo. And once you have this information uh, organized, then this is where your domain expertise would come in, no? yung knowledge. And hopefully, all of these data that we would be collecting, because we are now assuming highly digital, will help us in policy making, in, in decision making. Again, with the ultimate goal of improving the well-being of the Filipino people. And this is what uh, I always try to emphasize in, in talks. No? Um, data and technology are cool. Super cool yan sila na topic, but they should not be the focus. Uh, 
ang focus talaga natin is yung insight. What are we getting from this data and technology? How can it help you as a civil servant, as a government employee, improve no, what you're doing? Okay, so you can serve better. No? So yun yung idea, insight yung focus natin. And when you talk about insight, very briefly, there are different levels of analytics that we can perform. So merong descriptive analytics, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive analytics. Don't worry, I'm not going to dive into the details, but I'm sharing this with you. You may Google about this so that you will learn more. Ito yung analytics na ginagawa uh, ng mga analysts. Well, um, and these are the different levels of complexity no that you can do with the data when you analyze it and the corresponding impact right so again the idea here is really to develop a data driven culture all the rest tama yon no to improve the way we do things to um to improve our service but ultimately once we become truly digital we will have a lot of data and we have to do something about that data and i'm going to show you three more examples now before i close this particular session. And I have to thank you all. Ang daming gandang insights on YouTube comment and also on Facebook, no? From enforcing the law, sabi ni Ermina, to public access, sabi ni Juness, no? And then, um, who else is, uh, ang haba eh. Let me just scroll it a bit lang. You, you're also talking about, yeah, fraud and cyber crimes na focus according to Cheer Francisco. So lots of great ideas here. And ultimately, once we become successful, we will have all of these data. And we have to use this data, okay, to get insights, to better understand our people, our society, our functions, so that we can deliver better services. And papakita ko sayo, this is what I said. So this is our project no, with the Hawaiian city uh, government. Um, eventually, this was a long project, by the way, uh, and, and lots of the data were not digital yet then. But we had a um, collaborator, yung LGU, si, si Mayor Bernard D. Sobrang innovative talaga ng city na to. That they were willing to work with data scientists like us from the organization of their data. And then some of their data, non-digital pa, and then we transformed them into digital. Because once you have data, na computer readable, then you can build all of these analytics. So the idea behind this dashboard is to have a bird's eye view of how the city is performing in various dimensions. No? So um, transport, air, traffic, etc., etc. And once you have this information, then you'll be much more informed when crafting policies, right? So it, it, definitely this was not an easy project, but everyone knew that this project had to be done. So these were just some of the things that we did. There's a lot of data set out there. Hindi iba, traditional pa, nasa papel pa, no? Lalo na mga land use maps. But we work closely together and we're very happy uh, that they're super open to collaborate. Um, kasama rin yung Isabella State University dito, and we started digitizing some of the LGU data. And then when we had this, we were able to build a data hub for them. And then from there, all the analytics will follow. It's amazing, right? Again, I wanted to show this to you because this is something that the Philippines, uh, the Philippine government has done. Ang kailangan lang natin is scale this and is spread it in your own, um, in your own uh, areas and regions, right? Another example, ito naman with Banco Central ng Pilipinas. No? Uh, we built an artificial intelligence again because they have data. They have digitalized their information. No? Uh, so build this capability at the central bank. Ano yung idea nila? So meron silang particular use case that they want to improve on. They, say, they said that how can we improve the current validation process at the BSP? Uh, these are done by students and also professors at the Asian Institute of Management. Daming papel, no? Uh, I'm sure those in COA can also relate to this, no? So every month, the Banco Central has to uh, regulate about more than 500 accounts, and each of the accounts would have about 2,000 items, no, that they have to look through. 
And um, for every account, you would spend about 40 person hours. That's a lot, especially if you're dealing with 500 accounts. That's about 20,000 person hours, right? So what did we do? We have the data digitalized. Now we can use advanced analytics, no? artificial intelligence to look for patterns in the data so that the algorithm can help our BSP heroes in this particular task. So eventually, the computer was actually able to decrease the, the processing time to 11 minutes, imagine. And again, this is because uh, BSP is really pushing for digital transformation. All of their data, most of their data are machine readable. And if they're machine readable, we can do analytics and we can automate the whole process. Another example that um, I'm gonna give you is with the freedom of information. Now, this is with the project management office. Again, this project um, was done at the Asian Institute of Management under our MS in Data Science program. So, ang idea naman nila dito is how can we improve efficiency in responding to requests in the EFOI portal for better service delivery? Ito yung tanong nila. Kasi ito yung sa sinasabi, I think, I forget. Nasa taas na. Yung ease of doing business, one of you mentioned it just now. Um, yeah, si Jasmine and si Josephine Lakai, you mentioned about the ease of doing business and the digital one-stop shop. Yun yung goal ng FOI, no? Um, from a few days, kung pwede ma-trim down siya uh, lower pa, from about 15 days, no? So, may mga requests online and they want to process this much faster. So the good news here is that, again, we have the data, naka-digital na yung data. So ipaprocess na lang natin, right? So ito yung usual process nila, umaabot ng 11 to 15 days. No? Kasi para receive yung request, day one, then they will assess the request. It will take about two to four days. And then pag na-assess na, na, na i-consider yung response, and then clearance for response, and then mag-issue ng response. But the FOI is not satisfied with this. They wanted to be much more efficient. And because they have digital data, they can do analytics. And to cut the long story short, uh, they were successful here because they did analytics. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip all of the, the math here and the, the technical here, but ito yung pinaka result. No? Yung current for workflow nila that would take about two to five no, if you include the, the receipt of the request. It, this was the assessment was trimmed down to 32 seconds. Isn't that impressive? Right? Then you can do a lot more creative things. No? Hindi na boring yung trabaho ninyo <laughs> na going through each document. Again, the idea here is once we're digital, it can help us in so many ways but another upside is that we will have all of these data that we can process we can analyze to help us in our decision making process so here's our our, our template for working with the enterprises with the large corporations and even the government agencies it's the same framework you will have a pain point that you want to address like you want to make things you want to improve things you want to cut down the, the processes and improve the ease of business. That is your, your issue. That is your question. And then you ask yourself, can we use data to actually help us address this question? And when we say data, what we mean is digital, ready to be analyzed by our scientists, by our analysts, by our computers, right? And it's an iterative process. So um, again, uh, the exciting part here is that we have the digital plan for the Philippines. We also have the artificial intelligence roadmap for the country. So everything is in place na talaga. It's all about implementing it. And you can see here, in details nito, masyadong maliit yung font, no? But here, your first part here is also aligned with what the DICT wants, which is digitization and improvement of our infrastructure. Ultimately, yung internet connection, which is really the bedrock of all of this. Um, so I'm just going to close with this one because uh, I want to hear more from you. Ang ganda na mga comments and questions. And yeah, maraming salamat sa lahat. And hopefully, hindi kayo na bore. 
I'm excited to engage with all of you. Again, thank you and good afternoon. Salamat, Michael. Thank you so much, po, uh, do, uh, doc, Dr. Erica. Thank you for the ve very excellent and comprehensive presentation. I think surely the participants were able to gather different perspectives po, no? on how to strengthen mm -hmm. uh, their current future initiatives. If I may share lang po my takeaways sa discussion yeah. natin earlier. Go, Michael. <laughs> uh, digital transformation, siguro ilagin natin siya sa konteksto ng fourth industrial revolution, really encourages economic growth and structural transformation. Yeah. I like how you presented po no, the case studies on the best practices po from branch branchless banking services, uh, the mm -hmm. one with crowdsourcing platforms, yung kay DepEd, and also that integrated mm -hmm. healthcare system. It somehow provides us some avenue of insights kung papaano ba o kung saan ba pwede ma-operationalize ang digital transformation. Mm -hmm. Another case in point, Doc, is how technology works, especially if organized. Na mention yung kanina yung about raw, then uh, the methods on how to present it in a very uh, fanciful manner. no Just to share lang po some perspectives on productivity studies. Indeed, technology transfer and innovation ay isa po sa mga known drivers ng productivity gains. So, mababalidate yeah. po na po doon na very essential ang data and technology sa ating mga work. However po, there are still challenges to keep in mind in pursuit of inclusive and, and people-centered data and technology. Mm -hmm. Pero may mga plano. May mga plan, yeah. may mga policies in place. Siguro po, uh, the perpetual question in mind is <laughs> how to ensure that those plans and policies are taken into continuity. So, Ay, yung po yung gusto wow. ko, yung, yung iwanan. Hindi na science yung, question, policy question talaga. Mike. Policy But no, question. that is a No, that is a very good question, Mike. No, uh, in fact, uh, ano lang backstory. When we were in Singapore, the I mentioned we were doing a lot of all of these digital initiatives. And when we came back home, you know, is what you did in Singapore something we can do in the Philippines, like yung uh, human mobility modeling? And then my response there was actually the science, the data, and technology is easy. No, that's that part. Pero yung political will kasi, to your point, no, paano natin ma-sustain and ma-ensure, actually, it really boils down to our listeners today, yung ating mga government employees. It's really up to you, our public sector, to push for this. No? Kasi that's why um, we're really grateful for the service that you provided. Kasi if all of you become aware of this power, now this is really what we need, this is what we want, then you can push your leaders, our leaders, no, to really make it happen. Hindi na siya plan lang. Kaya I really believe in what the DAP is doing, honestly, no, to enlighten everyone on the and empower them and, and understand truly what, what we all deserve and that we can push for it. I know it's a very Miss Universe answer, pero yun talaga eh. <laughs> <laughs> agree, Thank agree you for that question, Michael. Uh, let's go jump in po sa mga questions po na, na scope namin from our webinar participants po. No? May isang question po dito. Um, I read from an article that digital transformation when not managed properly may lead to fragmentation. I think siguro yung fragmentation na tinutukoy ay a single out of the initiative instead of the whole of government approach. Why is, yeah. this, why is this a dilemma and how can we practically address it po? Okay, so that again, that's a very good question. And it's tough to answer. It's not just happening actually in government, no? Tama naman sinabi na digital transformation in general. Uh, the, usually, the culprit is the lack of a data strategy, Michael, no? When I say the lack of data strategy, hindi clear where everyone would want to go. Ano ba yung ating vision? What are our strategic imperatives? And what are the KPIs for each individual agency or each office no kasi that should be very clear so that it can properly dictate yung mga investments natin in technology in building strategic capabilities uh in analytics man yan or digital or other things so kaya somehow nagiging fragmented and um sometimes hindi naman siya bad no uh kasi there are there are certain uh verticals or functions that are what may way faster than the others mm -hmm. So in a sense, uh, may naiiwan. Pero ang maganda if there is someone who would orchestrate 
and dapat meron tayong checkpoints uh, in in these initiatives para masabi oh imagine may naiiwan dito we should be um we should scale this further and and do some interventions to ensure that you're, we're still all looking at the same direction agree po uh, building mm-hmm. upon that doc doon sa strategies po no uh, one um feedback from facebook galing kay Brick Castro What is the effective mm. rules or policy should be considered to implement for responsible data analysis? Uh, again, that's a very tough question. Um, kasi before we impose policies, uh, ito talaga yung belief ko na, kahit in, in all aspects, before we impose policies, it's important that everybody's aware why we're doing what we're doing. No, um, uh, We, we cannot just impose like, oh, pag hindi ka data-driven, wala kang bonus. Yung mga ganon. But, I mean, I'm mentioning that because there have been people na nagsasabi na, pag hindi kayo nag-submit sa FOI, for example, or other agencies, then uh, walang bonus or something like that. But for me, we have to empower everyone first no? before we start uh, talking about policies. And I think ang uh, maganda dito is to have conversations such as this. I think magandang in, uh, motivation siya, di ba? Uh, Michael, um, what, you know, you get to see what the others are doing. You get to see the use cases. Siguro kung may policy man, it's really on the learning and development programs. And add na rin a bit of application mm-hmm. so that uh, people will not forget what what they've learned in sessions such as this. Agree, agree, Doc. Parang dito papasok yung benchmarking na tinatawag. Yes, very good. <laughs> May isang question tayo, Doc. In connection po sa Fourth Industrial Revolution, i-align ko po sa mm-hmm. work environment kasi very interesting. Oh. Po, no? uh, <laughs> considering the great assistance of digitalization, especially during the pandemic, in what particular mm-hmm. situations you'll still choose human effort over digitalization? This is from Miss Jaspine Pexon from YouTube. Ah, uh, okay. Sa akin, it will be empathy. Na yung 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 lalo na yung pag uh, distribute ng ayuda, yung mga reaching out to those uh, na na uh, COVID infected. And I'm saying this because I attended the uh, RCBC Mani Bella. It's Mani Pera and then Mani Bella na effort wherein uh, pinakita nila how the digital can marry with the physical. So What they're doing is they're reaching out sa mga far-flung areas, working with the barangays, in fact, no, para magiging banked yung mga Filipinos. But it's not just about digital, Michael. They, they, they showed in the video that people are actually talking to other people. Kasi yun yung sometimes yung danger minsan. No? If we automate things, if we keep on um, engaging, lalo na on human services with the machines, sometimes... Maybe, just maybe, nakakalimutan yung, yung part on the human side, the humanness. So, yun, yung mga ganon, yung to show that you care, yung creativity, I would still go for humans uh, on this aspect. Kaya, we push for AI, we push for automation on the routine-driven activities. No? Yung mga paulit-ulit na ginagawa natin, for example, magbabasa ng document. These are things that the machines can do. But everything else no, uh, that will Um, ask us to to talk to other people, to explain. I think important pa rin talaga yung human touch and it should not go away. It should always be there. Agree, Doc. Importante talaga yung may human interaction. Oo, yeah. Ay, um, ako, ayoko nakikipag-usap sa chatbot. <laughs> <laughs> Despite being trendy. <laughs> Doc, may <laughs> question dito. In connection po sa effect ng technology, Ah, uh, agad po ito. How can leaders strengthen digital transformation in a way that does not burden employees and hamper yeah. activity? No, that is an important. I know kung alam ko ang very sagot good, talaga. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a very good question. Uh, we I cannot mention which agency, but we did help a particular agency before in their digital transfer. At least the first step, no. And Yeah, during the the workshops, everyone, everyone was excited. And pero nung pa, patapos na, what we all realized, the participants and us as well, was that iba yung job roles and job descriptions. Eh. So who will be the ones na magpo push for this? And how can we ensure na hindi sila natatambakan 
ng trabaho and then yung daily tasks nila are still demanded from them. Um, that's a tough one to answer, honestly. And one of the ways that I know some legislators and some um, individuals from the government are pushing for is to add mga plantilla talaga. No? I, I'm not so sure how how um, possible that is or doable or if it even makes sense to add plantilla on digital transformation, on data analytics, all of these things. Para nakafocus lang sila do- doon, no? Every time we engage with companies, we always tell them yung digital transformation journey is not for the faint of heart. Hindi siya yung gusto mo lang mangyari and then mangyayari na. You really have to be um, intentional no? and put investments. Hindi lang siya something na we, we do in talks like this one. So, yun yun. Um, it's a tough question. Uh, once I figure it out, maybe I can share with you. But, isa sa mga ideas ko talaga is dapat may dedicated talaga na individuals and dedicated uh, departments or or yeah offices on okay. this one. Agree po. Mm. I like no? the, mm-hmm. how you frame it to be intentional. No? Our next question mm-hmm. will be in that kind of aspect po. No? Uh, this is from Junette Noble from YouTube. What strategy mm. would you recommend for government entities to have the full buy-in of their employee body on transitioning to a data-driven culture? Mm, another good question. And the question is not only relevant for government, but also other organizations, including the large corporations, the small and medium enterprises. Important ang buy-in. If you ask yourself, they are, how can you be willing or how will you be motivated if there use cases that you can relate on? Mga yung benchmarking that you mentioned earlier, Michael. Uh, and then yung constant feeding ng information that can inspire you. No? So, yung ganito, parang in, even in companies, no, sometimes ayaw nilang gumalaw. But if you show them that, hey, company XYZ is doing this and it's really helping them, no, you, it would be good if we can make it real for the individual as well. Like, how will the individual benefit from it too? No? Will it help you finish your task earlier? na mas less na go OT ka so you can spend more time with family. Yung mga ganon, uh, it's important that for any initiative, hindi lang yung mga digital transformation, for any in, uh, initiative for that matter, you also have to think about yung mga individual workers natin and how that initiative could benefit them. That is how you're gonna get a buy-in. Pag-clear yung vision and pag-align kayo with the vision. Agree. So ang keyword ay clarity. And alignment. Clarity, yes. Yes. Uh, my next question po tayo dito. You mentioned earlier, uh, Doc, yung uh, journey, digital transformation journey ng mm-hmm. organization. So, looking at the current situation po ngayon, we are in right now, what stage in the journey would you find most organizations today? Very nascent pa. <laughs> La, uh, super. Uh, I, I'm benchmarking uh yung sa mga companies and governments that I've worked with no even outside of the Philippines medyo medyo malayo pa yung hahabol din natin but actually accelerating naman yung efforts honestly um Michael no it's really inspiring uh if you see um what the government is doing right now the DTI the DOST the DICT they're they're really doing a lot pero medyo malayo pa tayo kasi we're starting from a low base no but but definitely lots of initiatives nakikita ko that makes that would actually make you proud no kaya sabi ko you visit all of these websites para malaman niyo kung ano yung mga nangyayari no but but yes medyo malayo pa tayo um when i was in singapore for example everyone no so we work with the land transport authority there very impressive yung kanila mga planners halos at may phd's and they have their own academy so the the agency folks can really really work with the scientists there so mas in policy making mo very data driven um parang feeling mo talaga colleagues mo sila sa scientific community so in that aspect kaya i'm also pushing for digital and data literacy talaga for everyone i think crucial yun kasi it will empower everyone eh parang uh, there are companies right now, Michael, na may tinatawag silang citizen data scientists or citizen data analysts. Kasi they're empowering everyone to learn 
uh, how to read data, to learn how to analyze data, to help them in their own individual functions. Yeah. Agree, agree. I concur that. I like that doc na yung first step talaga is awareness. Second is building. Yes, awareness. Mm-hmm. Kaya nga, di ba, let's go back. Hindi ako nagsisip-sip ha, but the AP is really doing a good job here. <laughs> Thank you po. We have ano, questions po from Facebook po. This is from Mr. Ernie Tomas Jr. Actually, it's a comment mm-hmm. and a question. Comment po muna is okay. government need to prioritize those digital projects that create more agree. value. Agree. Can we Agree, measure Ernie. the public value? That's the question. Mm-hmm. Second, mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. can digital technology or AI help in measuring public value? Mm-hmm. Given the limited so, budget, um, uh, given the, point that the limited budget, so government can prioritize uh, those initiatives po in the integration. Wow, very, very brilliant question, Sir Ernie Tomas Jr. No? Uh, this is also where we start, actually, Ernie, when we engage with uh, companies. No? What is the impact of this investment? What is the impact of us answering that use case? What is the impact of uh, getting all of these technologies of becoming digital? And the short answer to your question is yes, we can definitely measure public value. No? Makikita mo na lang, like, yung, yung speed ng service, how it can... Uh, hasten it, yung ilang families yung reach out mo within X number of days versus, let's say, 20 days. There are ways to measure it. Of course, some medyo mas challenging, lalo na kapag ka, you have to estimate yung, yung impact of it, no? Yung, like, yung livelihood, ganyan. But there are KPIs. For example, the Human Development Index, no? We can look at the inequality measures. Pwede natin gamitin po yun as, as a measure ng ating uh, public value ng ginagawa natin. Um, uh, for example, yung mga jobs na makakreate natin, yung mga ganun, yung ilang students yung mga papatapos natin, yung poverty levels, paano siya ma, ma, madidiminish. Um, but I like how Sir Ernie really asked that question. In fact, that is the first one. Uh, first ones that we need to answer. Why are we doing this? What is the impact of this? And is this worth our investment? Especially if the budget is limited. No. Thank you for that uh, really, really good question po. Agree po. Parang understanding the root cause muna and the significance of what, why are we doing this initiative provides us some Mm-mm. avenue of how to move forward. Tama po. Correct. Guru, ano, uh, angulo tayo, Doc, sa technicalities muna. Uh, personal mm-hmm. question for me is uh, DOCA. Kasi uh, a lot of us doesn't know the term very well. So what's what's the difference between digitization and digitalization? Madalas mo kasi na halo halo yun eh. Uh, and ako, ako, ako din. Sorry ha. Uh, I'm sure there are people who make that distinction. Um, digitalization, digitization, I actually interchange those two terms. <laughs> But i google natin mamaya yan, no? Um, but if someone, if you know, please comment sa, sa YouTube or sa Facebook. Actually, yun din eh. Ini-interchange ko silang dalawa. Sorry about that. <laughs> Pero somewhat, ano po sila eh, interchangeable naman talaga. Siguro, diba, think, parang oh, pinapalit-palit sila. Parang, we, can, we can Google that now. <laughs> Good question. Ayan, actually, nagta-top search siya. Digitization versus digitalization. Ah, digitalization daw is related sa process. Ayun. Process. While the digital digitization is um, yung i-relate mo siya sa information. So very close. Yung isa process, yung isa, yung pinaka-information, i-digitize mo. Okay. Context, I learned something today. Pero <laughs> in the context of transformation, present yung both po. Dapat. Yeah, yes. Mm. Oo. Kasi kailangan mong i-digitize yung information mo. Mm-hmm. Agree, agree. I think that, <laughs> that is all the time that we have po uh, for the webinar series on digital transformation for enhancing public sector productivity. Our sincerest appreciation po sa inyo for being with us today despite your schedule po, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Legare po. Maraming Again. salamat din, thank you, thank you, uh, Michael, you. and everyone for uh, engaging with us. May, actually, may comment si Paulitz uh, on digitization. Thank you, Paulitz, sa, sa Facebook ito. Salamat. Thank you, thank you po. Again, we would like to remind our participants that in order to get an e-certificate of attendance, 
they should accomplish the session's evaluation form and pass the exams. The link to the unified three-day evaluation. The link of the unified three-day evaluation exam will be given towards the end of the session tomorrow. Thank you very much for your support and see you again tomorrow, October 7, same time for the final day of our webinar series on digital transformation for enhancing public sector productivity. I'm your host again, Mika Pereira. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.